is taxes. It is a very important 10 mark question which can be asked in your theory examination. It is bleeding from inside of the nose. It is a sign not a disease as such. Its causes include local, general and idiopathy. Under local causes, we have nose related ones and nasopharynx related ones. Under nose related ones, we can learn that through a mnemonic, the internet for new age demands. Here T stands for trauma. We can write any trauma in the nose such as fingernail trauma, injuries of the nose, intranasal surgery, any violent sneeze or fractures. Here IN stands for infections which can be acute or chronic. Under acute we can write viral rhinitis, acute sinusitis, nasal diphtheria etc. In chronic we can write all crust forming diseases such as atrophic rhinitis which we have already learned and some granulomatous diseases such as TB, syphilis etc or septal perforation or rhinosporidiosis which, we'll, which we will learn later. Here F for foreign bodies which can be non-living or living. Under non-living we have rhinolith which is a stone formation in the nose. Under living, we have maggots and leeches. N for neoplasms of nose, which can be benign or malignant. Under benign, we have hemangioma or papilloma. Under malignant, we have any carcinoma or sarcoma. A for atmospheric changes. When we go to higher altitudes or sudden decompression, that is Kaysen's disease, we can get epistaxis. D for deviated nasal septum. When we see nasopharynx related causes, we can learn that through a mnemonic, Adam's juicy mango attracted malignant tumor. Here, A in Adam stands for adenoiditis, juicy J stands for juvenile angiofibroma and malignant tumor as such. Then we have general causes. Here we have cardiovascular system abnormalities like hypertension, arteriosclerosis, mitral stenosis, pregnancy induced hypertension etc. Then we have blood vessel and blood related disorders like aplastic anemia, leukemia, thrombocytopenic and vascular purpura, hemophilia, Christmas tree disease, scurvy etc. Then we have liver related diseases such as hepatic cirrhosis and deficiency of factors 2, 7, 9 and 10. Then we have kidney related disease such as chronic nephritis and excessive use of drugs such as salicylates, analgesics and anticoagulant therapy can also cause epistaxis. Then we have acute general infections such as influenza, measles, chicken pox, whooping cough, rheumatic fever infectious mononucleosis, typhoid, pneumonia, malaria and dengue. Then we have mediastinal compression, tumors of mediastinum, raised venous pressure. Then we have vicarious menstruation in which at the time of menstruation there is cyclical bleeding from extra genital organs such as eyes, nose etc. And then comes idiopathic causes. After that, we'll st now study the sites of epistaxis. Most commonly, epistaxis is found in Little's area, about 90 percentage. This is the Little's area, which is formed by key cell black plexus, which we will learn in another video. Then we have epistaxis above the level of middle turbinate bleeding at the anterior and posterior ethmoidal vessel and if it is below the level of middle turbinate it is from sphenopalatine artery branches it may be hidden or lying lateral to middle or inferior turbinate then it can be from posterior part of nasal cavity and it can be diffuse and both from septum and lateral wall then comes it can be from nasopharynx classification of epistaxis 
we have anterior epistaxis and posterior epistaxis anterior epistaxis is bleeding from front of the nose when the patient is in sitting position then posterior epistaxis is bleeding which flows back to the throat and the patient swallows it which later come as coffee color vomitus here this is littles area which is formed by kieselwag plexus and this is woodruff's plexus here littles area is a common site of origin for anterior epistaxis whereas woodruff's plexus is common site of origin for posterior epistaxis now we will learn about the differences between anterior and posterior epistaxis anterior epistaxis is more common whereas posterior epistaxis is less common site it is mostly from littles area or anterior part of lateral wall whereas posterior epistaxis is mostly from posterior superior part of nasal cavity which is often difficult to localize the bleeding point under age anterior epistaxis occurs mostly in children or young adults whereas posterior epistaxis is after 40 years of age and anterior epistaxis is mostly caused by trauma here it is often due to hypertension or arteriosclerosis here bleeding can be easily controlled by local pressure or anterior pack and this bleeding is very mild here bleeding is severe and it requires hospitalization or post nasal pack often required